Joy is not going to always come easy. You have to work for it. So that self-care that you need to do, you have to work for it. Joy doesn't come natural all the time. You don't just fall into it and, oh, I'm just joyful. Yay. You have to work for it. If you have depression, clinical depression, work for that cure. Work for that relief. Take your medication every day. Go to see the therapist. Do that exercise. Do the journaling. Do those things Help us help you, help your provider help you so that you can experience that joy. Welcome to Journey to Joy Live, a podcast to promote wellness, resilience, and joy while providing mental health awareness and breaking down the stigma of mental illness in the Black community. I'm your host, Dr. N. Joy, and today I bring to you episode 52, From Here to Joy. Episode 52, I do an episode once a week. So 52 weeks means Journey to Joy Live has made it to a complete year. And I am so excited because I love podcasting and this has been fun. It has not felt like work and I just absolutely love it. You know, people say that you know what your passion is when you can do it and not worry about getting paid. (laughs) When you can do it. And it feels like fun and you feel like you're helping somebody and you feel like it's your passion and you feel fulfilled. And I feel all those things. I've been a psychiatrist, feel a medical doctor for about 10 years, actually 11 years. And I've been practicing as a psychiatrist for about five years. And, you know, I see a patient one at a time and I see all these therapists out here podcasting and going live and doing all those things. So last year after I started my business, I said, you know what? I want to do the same thing. It's free and you can just post your videos anywhere you want, whether it's a podcasting platform or social media platform. And so I said, you know what? As long as my husband is there to support me and watch the kids while I do this and I'm going to do it. So I'm so excited. Thank you, husband, my number one supporter and fan and cheerleader for allowing me to do this because I couldn't do it without him or else it'd be a bunch of kids running around me and all that. So I'm very pleased. Thank you, Juan Mena, for watching the kids while I do this and be able to come to you every week. And whether I have people watching live, there's always people watching later. So I hope that if you ever hear anything that you like, that you will share it, comment, ask questions, tell others, follow, subscribe, do all those things. Because all I'm doing here is promoting the fact that it is okay to not be okay. We need to start talking about uncomfortable things getting comfortable talking about uncomfortable things. And it is okay to reach out for help. It is okay to talk about your feelings and things like that so that you can get the treatment that you need it. Because when it comes to mental health treatment, it is treatable. It's treatable. You just have to find the right kind of treatment for you, whether it's medication or therapy or less than therapy. I call the area before therapy less than therapy because there's a lot of different things like self-care, meditation, journaling, exercising, dancing, music, hanging out with friends, you know, things that are helpful for you and your joy that you can experience before therapy. And when those things don't work, that's when you hit therapy, but you're always doing your less than therapy no matter what while you're in therapy. And if you need medication, you reach out and get medication, but you're always doing therapy when you're on medication and the less than therapy technique. So all of that adds up to a more fulfilled life. And lately I've been talking about the five crucial areas of your life five crucial health areas. There's our mental health that we need to focus on, our physical health that, of course, we need to focus on, our social health, our financial health, and our aspirational health, our purpose. Anytime any of those areas in our life are faltering, you want to try to fix those things. You could be doing well in all the areas, but then if one falters, then you kind of feel like you're in shambles, that kind of thing. So an example of that would be, if your mental health is great, you don't need a therapist, you don't need to be on medication, You your relationships are going well, your finances are going well, 
and your physical health is going well, but then you don't feel fulfilled in your purpose, then there's like this sense of emptiness and feeling like you don't belong and feeling inadequate. So we need to focus on all of those crucial areas of our life. So that's what I've been discussing over this past few weeks. And just in general, Journey to Joy Live, making it to a year. Let's recap this year, this wonderful first year of Journey to Joy Live. My first episode back in July 5th, July is Minority Mental Health Awareness Month, and it is coming up again. So I started the podcast during Minority Mental Health Awareness Month because Black people need to understand that mental health is okay to talk about, that mental health is a thing. (laughs) We have reach times where stigma continues to get at us. And whether it's a cultural reason or religious reason or our family or whatever, we feel like, oh, no, mental health, we can't talk about it. So in the first episode, which is called Choose Joy, I speak about how you can actually choose joy that you can choose to enter into your journey to joy. Everyone has a journey to joy. It looks different. Joy isn't just an emotion, but it could be that you agree and commit to the journey. You agree to get in the car and drive on that road to joy, right? And getting in the car can look like different things for you. It could be that you're finally going to get that treatment. You're finally going to see the psychiatrist. You're finally going to get on that medication or you're finally going to work on your finances. You're finally going to work on those relationships. You finally recognize that you need to kick that addiction that you have and enter into that recovery phase. So choosing joy is a commitment and obviously a choice. And then you start to experience the peace and the joy and the fulfillment that you are finally doing and feeling empowered in that resilience. So that was what I talked about in episode one. Episode two, I actually brought my sister as a guest and I talked about breaking the stigma. How can we break the stigma? And she was fabulous. My sister kind of brought that patient perspective. She mentioned that she's not a patient. She hasn't been in therapy. And she talked about reasons why, you know, she is not in therapy and um, just kind of brought out those misconceptions and, and myths that Black people tend to have when it comes to treatment. So that was a really cool organic conversation that would be great for you to go back to and listen to. And then episode three, I talked about recognizing the signs of mental illness in your self and loved ones, because sometimes we don't even recognize when things are wrong. When you notice that you're constantly feeling drained or you used to sleep well, but then all of a sudden you're not sleeping well, or you are not able to function. The inability to function is what a disorder is. That is a reason to go see a therapist. Inability to work or your relationships are faltering or you're not being a good parent, you know, all of a sudden, not able to take care of others. Or you might notice that your loved one is isolating, not talking as much or doing the other way around. Their behaviors are changing and they're not doing well at school or work. So you might notice um, some differences in them. And that would be some signs that they need some help or there, there's some mental illness going on. So that's episode three. And then I ended July Minority Mental Health Awareness Month by going into episode four, which was mental health in the Black community. And I had a special guest, Jessica V. Taylor. Uh, she's an LSW who is my BFF and also owner of Therapy for Black Women practice. So she came on and talked about her perspective of mental health in the Black community. We talked about stigma. We talked about awareness. We talked about microaggressions and how you can address that when you experience it because there's still microaggressions and there's macroaggressions. And then I went into August. August is going back to school, right? So I did for episode five, six, and seven, the back to school stress edition with PsyKid. PsyKid is actually my son. He, it was his choice to be on as a guest. 
So we have part one, part two, part three of PsyKid. And he has his own YouTube channel, PsyKid Life. <laughs> so we talked about peer pressure. We talked about bullying, um, all those things and anxieties that you might get when it comes to going back to school. So that's going to be exciting because that was his first time going into middle school. He was going into sixth grade. Now he's going into seventh grade. So I know I'm going to want to have him come on this coming August to talk about back to school stress. At least that's if he wants to. Of course, it's his choice. And then episode eight, I talked about got ADHD. So I went into what is ADHD? Because we hear about ADHD a lot. And sometimes it's taboo where you're just not sure like it is does a person really have it or everybody has ADHD what is going on with ADHD so I talked about the signs and symptoms of ADHD and different treatments of it because just because your kid may have ADHD or that you may have ADHD it doesn't mean that you have to get treatment it doesn't mean that you have to be on medication is what I mean because you can treat it with fish oil you can treat it with scheduling, time management skills, with therapy, but not always just jump straight to a medication. And also for adult ADHD, it doesn't mean that, um, I mean, maybe maybe you have ADHD, maybe it got missed when you were a kid, but it could be that you are experiencing some type of stress or anxiety that has brought out symptoms that look like ADHD or brought out the ADHD that you already had. Either way, talk to your doctor about it, talk to your therapist about it and see what kinds of of help you can get. And then episode nine fell on August 31st, which is actually overdose, uh, International Overdose Awareness Day. And I was lucky to have special guest, Dr. Ashaki Warren. I met her in residency training. She's a fabulous psychiatrist and owner of Love Your Brain Psychiatry. So she came on and we talked about recovery and opioid overdose, opioid use, and that was a real good talk because it is really good for us to talk about recovery and to talk about addiction and to talk about the stigma against it because a lot of people feel like because they have it that it's their choice or because their family member has it well why can't they get off of it but it really is an addiction and it's really hard to talk about and that went into episode 10 national recovery month which is what september is and i had the guest my husband, Juan Mena, who talked about his recovery from alcoholism, and now he's approaching almost five years of recovery from alcoholism. So he talked about how he actually kicked it cold turkey. Not everybody can do that, but he was successful in that. And, you know, he's somebody that can be around others uh, who are drinking. You know, it's different with different people. Like maybe you're a person that can be around people drinking, or maybe a person that can't kick the habit or kick the disease, <laughs> get into recovery and remain in recovery, cold turkey. Maybe it's a gradual recovery process, but everyone is different. So that was episode 10. And then I went into episode 11 because September is both recovery, National Recovery Month, as well as National Suicide Awareness Month. So episode 10, episode 11 was the segue from National Recovery Month to Suicide Prevention Month. And so I just kind of made that segue into that and talked about a suicide prevention as well as recovery. And then that took me into episode 12, which was Suicide Prevention Month. And suicide is real. Suicidal thoughts are real. If you have a loved one or a child uh, that talks about being suicidal. I know it, some parents get frustrated because they feel like that is an attention seeking behavior for a child to say, well, I'm just going to kill myself because there are a lot of times I have a lot of patients who, when they are upset, they become suicidal or when they're upset, they say they're suicidal. So either way, they need treatment because they need to go to therapy. If it's the person who, well, I just said it, I was just angry. Well, they need therapy to kind of understand what are the go-to things that they can say instead of, well, I'll just kill myself when they actually don't mean it. And of course, if anger leads them to actually feel suicidal, of course, they need therapy and treatment so that they can, um, you know, the thought process that leads to feeling suicidal will be slowed um, or, or disappear. Of course, talking about Suicide Prevention Month was a heavy topic. So episode 13, we went to self-care is not selfish. It's selfless. So that was episode 13. Just talking about self-care. 
Making sure you take time for yourself. I know I remember mentioning the different myths surrounding self-care. A lot of people think, well, self-care is just a luxury. Self-care is expensive. Self-care is for is selfish. But those all those things are wrong. You can do little bites of self-care throughout the day. It's very important, especially if you have a child with mental illness or behavior issues. You have to take time for yourself. I mentioned on a post recently that parenting is 100% patience and 50% sacrifice. Of course, there's sacrifices you have to make as a parent, but not 100%. You have to be able to focus on yourself too. I know it's easier said when I have a spouse, Uh, that I can trade off things with. But even as a single parent, my best friend does it all the time where she is able to have time for herself, even um, with having a child or being a single parent. So get with a therapist to try to figure out how you can do that. Episode 14, I had special guest Christopher Hughbanks, who talked with me about mental health in the Black LGBTQ plus community. That was exciting to talk about. In fact, let's see, that was during... I think that was during October because that is LGBTQ plus history month. So that's why I had him on. So that was really awesome talking about that and what they go through. Think about it. You know, black people are already discriminated against and have issues and generational trauma. Of course, LGBTQ plus community has the same thing. So if you're black and you're a part of the LGBTQ plus community, that is like double trauma, double stress, double issues. Um, in addition to other things that that individual might be going through. So you want to get into that. That's episode 14, Mental Health in the Black LGBTQ plus community. Then episode 15, I was in the Dominican Republic with my friends and my husband. And so I had Jessica V. Taylor and Juan Mena on as guests where we are on the beach at night. And the title was The Gift of Wellbeing. Why? Because it was my 40th birthday. So we were talking about gifts and giving yourself the gift of well-being beside being on that podcast for about 15 minutes and honestly like I said that's not work for me but I definitely gave myself the gift of well-being and I checked out I did not have my phone on was not checking any emails or anything it must have been the first trip that I actually did that and actually got away because it just felt great and I got back and I was rejuvenated so you need to give yourself the gift of well-being even if it's not for your birthday, give yourself the gift of well-being because you deserve well-being. You deserve self-care and you deserve to put yourself first. Episode 16, I had a great friend, my friend uh, Nellie, who was actually a friend that was in Dominican Republic, re-recorded that in the sunny beach of Dominican Republic. It was a review of the six bakes of human needs. And that was really interesting. It was actually my first time hearing about the six human basic needs. You don't have to check that back out because I don't remember the six human uh, needs. Well, I remember one of them was uncertainty and certainty. The fact that we need uncertainty in order to uh, to relieve stress, as well as we need certainty. I mean, some people need more certainty than others, but, you know, I feel like I fall into like where I need more uncertainty sometimes because sometimes if I over plan something, then that makes me get anxiety. And then for others, and then of course I have some times where I need to have some certainty or else if I didn't have it, then I would um, have some anxiety. Then episode 17 One of my favorite, we were in Times Square. Dr. Ashley Berry and Dr. Alima Zakers joined me live from Times Square called Is Joy a Choice or an Emotion? Which one? Well, I already talked about that. I definitely believe it's a choice. And of course, it's an emotion. We think it's both. You have to make the choice. It's just like with love. Love is a choice too. You don't just fall in love. We like to say we fall in love, but it's a choice. You choose to love people. And I think that's why some relationships are um, hard to get through because people feel like it should be easy, but you got to work for it. And it's the same thing with joy. Joy is not going to always come easy. You have to work for it. So that self-care that you need to do, you have to work for it. Joy doesn't come natural all the time. You don't just fall into it and, oh, I'm just joyful. Yay. You have to work for it. If you have depression, clinical depression, 
Work for that cure. Work for that relief. Take your medication every day. Go to see the therapist. Do that exercise. Do the journaling. Do those things. Help us help you. Help your provider help you so that you can experience that joy. And of course, that led into episode 18, overcoming the obstacles to joy. There are many obstacles to joy. Stress is an obstacle to joy. Difficult relationships are obstacles to joy. Parenting is an obstacle to joy. Yes. So there are many obstacles and you can experience joy despite those obstacles. One obstacle to joy is grief. And so that leads into episode 19, where I had special guest, Dr. Carla Booker, who had um, just released her book. And she was talking about being a, a caregiver of a loved one who had passed away. And so that name of that episode was Journey from Grief to Joy. Grief can definitely be an obstacle to joy, but you can experience joy again beyond your grief. Grief hits people differently. Of course, I've talked about my father from time to time because he died in 2021. So that's almost three years. And it just depends. You know, it'll hit me on like maybe his birthday or something I might see that reminds me of him, but it's not constant. And it's not always constant for everyone else to experience their grief. Sometimes it is. Sometimes you're going through that from a day-to-day basis and you might need treatment for your grief. But just because you're grieving, just because you lost a loved one does not mean you too can't experience joy. And that led into episode 20, navigate past trauma and find joy. Trauma is an obstacle to joy. And just because you've had trauma, you've had ghosts in your past, you've had abuse, neglect, abandonment, some type or sexual abuse, sexual assault, gun violence. You've heard of someone dying, a life-threatening situation, natural disasters, car accident. There's a lot of different things that can can be considered a trauma. And maybe if something is a trauma to someone, it might not be a trauma to another person or just because it doesn't feel like it's a trauma to you doesn't mean it's like that to someone else. So don't downplay something that someone has been through. Either way, your trauma doesn't have to be a prevention to your joy. It does not have to mean just because you went through that trauma that you can't experience joy. I talked about a patient at the Celebration Achievement program at Chris 180 a few weeks ago. Oh, wow. So powerful. She got up and talked about how she's seven months sober and how she experienced trauma. And she said, stop re-traumatizing yourself because a lot of times we turn to addiction, we turn to drugs or turn to cutting, turn to those things that might feel good in the moment, but it's actually detrimental to our health and it's actually re-traumatizing yourself. So for her, she felt like she was re-traumatizing herself by turning to addiction or falling to addiction. And she said, I'm going to get the treatment. I'm going to work for it. That's exactly what I said. You got to work for your joy. So stop re-traumatizing yourself and get the treatment. And of course, this doesn't mean like it's your fault or blaming the victim or none of those things. But there is a part of our treatment that includes us. It takes work to be on your journey to joy. You're not going to just easily fall into joy. It takes work and you've got your mental health providers and your family and your friends to support you along the way. But you've got to do your part too. You can do it. Episode 21, From Anger to Gratitude. That was surrounding Thanksgiving. So that's what I talked about, from anger to gratitude. Sometimes we get angry on things. And I actually have an episode coming up in the next couple of weeks. The title is, "How? what do I have to do in my mind to not cuss you out? <laughs> so I'm going to circle back on the things that we have to do when we get angry. And how can we turn to gratitude? How can we use those feelings that we might have and slow our thoughts down and not be angry, but but actually become grateful? And that's how we can regulate our emotions. Episode 22 was about navigating holiday stress because, of course, we were getting into that holiday stress. And in episode 23 was seasonal affective disorder. Episode 24, are you sad or sad? That's that more of that seasonal affective disorder because you can experience that around those winter months, but you can also experience seasonal affective disorder in the summer. I have a patient who mentioned that they, it's summertime, Dr. Minna, and I'm feeling sad, you know. So sad, seasonal affective disorder isn't just during the winter months. You can also experience it during the summer months as well for whatever reason. So recognize it, keep a journal, keep a record of how your mental health and symptoms are around certain parts of the year. And, you know, tell your doctor, tell your therapist, this is what you've been going through. Episode 25 fell near Christmas. So the title was joy. 
to the world, giving joy to the world. Journey to Joy Live, that's what I talk about, is joy. The world can experience joy. You can experience joy. Once you experience joy for yourself, you can advocate and do that for other people and help other people experience joy. Episode 26 was reflecting on resilience, bringing joy into the new year. So, of course, that was the top of the year because we a lot of times when a year uh, comes and it starts, we're thinking about the previous year and what we wanted to do and what our goals were and if we met them and the year plans coming up. What's our resolution? What do we want to do with our lives and things like that? Whether you have a New Year's resolution or not, it's really about resilience and bouncing back and being able to get through that stress and being able to get through whatever you encountered and just giving yourself grace because it's okay if you didn't do the things that you wanted to do, but learning and reflecting on what did I get through? What did I learn from my challenges? And thinking through that on a day-to-day basis. Episode 27, Black Parents with ADHD. I have my good friend, Mike Mike Davenport, who he has ADHD, I have ADHD, and we may or may not have kids that may have symptoms. I mean, you know, toddlers don't have ADHD, but toddlers have the symptoms of it, but it's developmentally appropriate. So he got on the show, we were talking about ADHD and um, being parents with ADHD. Actually, we weren't talking about our kids. That's right. We were talking about ourselves being parents with ADHD and how can you parent? And I talked about being able to collaborate with your kids and being able to um, understand where they are and where they're coming from, uh, but also taking care of yourself and your mental health and how you can, you need structure when you're a parent with ADHD, but you know, if you need to be on medication, take it. I take fish oil. I used to take medication for ADHD, um, but I've learned that I could do without it. You can do without it. There are some people that can't. It just depends on which one you are. So that was episode 27, episode 28, new year, new joy. So that was talking about the new year and experiencing the newness of joy. Episode 29, Ignite Your Spark and Beat Burnout with special guest Dr. RJ. Oh, yeah. She's the special. She's the uh, burnout, the beat burnout doc. She mainly talks about um, how to beat burnout for people who are executives and people who are um yeah, successful leaders. And we all can go through burnout and experience those things. But it's very important to um, know how to navigate that because no matter what your career is or what you're doing, burnout can come and you might feel compassion fatigue. So episode 30 in my feelings. So just how we need to take a break, take a deep breath and, and relax. Episode 31, enjoy sex again beyond the mental clutter with special guest, Dr. Ashley Towns. And that's important. That's important. So I actually was inspired for that show because a lot of ladies talk about feeling like they can't enjoy sex or that it's a chore. And it's too bad because we spend so much time at work and spend so much time with um, prioritizing everybody else. And then at the end of the day, all we want to do is go to sleep and we don't we don't want to experience sex or those things or we can't relax enough to enjoy it. And so in that episode, Enjoy Sex Again, Beyond the Mental Clutter was really talking about how we can relax and meditate and the things we have to do in order to actually enjoy sex because sex can be a part of your self-care. So episode 32, From DMs to I Do's, Finding Joy in Relationships with special guest, my husband, Juan Mena, as well as Keenan and... Kenyon and Takara Martin, who are relationship experts. So we were getting into February, starting to talk about relationships. Episode 33 was Love Yourself. Episode 34, Stressless Love with special guest, my cousin and his wife, Dana Randolph, because she wrote a book about uh, love and marriage and relationships. So she talked about that book. So February is all about that love and relationships. Relationships can be hard. And, you know, a lot of single people, they talk about, well, I want to be married. I can't wait to be married. No, no, no. You can wait because it's hard. You have to work for it. You got to work for the joy. You got to work for the love. Nothing's just going to come easy. And, and that's a part of our mindset that we have to frame because it's okay. That's okay. Bring it on challenge. Bring it on work because it's worth it. 
is worth it. The the things that you have to do in order to have a successful relationship and you grow and you become better and more resilient and you feel more empowered when things are successful when you work through it and you become more humble and more patient. So bring it on challenges. Episode 35, we got into March. That was mental health. Oh, no, no, no. We were at the end of February. I talked about mental health in Black history. So I talked about different pioneers in history, in Black history, who actually did experience mental illness. And I learned a lot. Like, I didn't even know that Martin Luther King was suicidal at the age of 12 and actually had two attempts at the age of 12. I didn't know that. And That was empowering to know because it was just like, wow, that just shows how important it is for us to talk about what's going on, not suffering in silence because we need the treatment. And who knows where the world could be if something did happen to him before the age of 12, before he was able to make change to the world. So it is very important for you to understand that you have a purpose and that you have a reason, even if you don't know your reason and your purpose, but to seek help and get it because there is some reason why you are on this earth that you are to um, continue to live and continue to have life. So it's important to Find that will for treatment, even despite those suicidal thoughts that you might have. Episode 36, kicking out the stigma, finding joy in the game. That was with my special guest, my brother-in-law, Kenny Mena. He talked about his battle with anxiety and schizophrenia and how soccer has been his sanctuary as well as treatment. Episode 37, mental health and women's history. So that was getting into March. Episode 38, Body Joy, Loving the Skin You're In. It's very important to love the skin you're in despite what you think it should look like or what you feel. And that gets into episode 39 when body image leads to disordered image. Because if we don't love the skin we're in, then that leads to us wanting to look a certain way. And that's healthy reasons. I say all the time, if you can, if you can change it, sure, change it, work for it, do it. And if it's healthy, do it. But if you can't change it, work on that acceptance of that thing. You can't change your height. Oh, I want to be taller. I want to be shorter. You can't change it. Work on accepting yourself for who you are. I want to lose weight. I want to gain weight. Well, that's something you can change, but work on doing it in a healthy way. If you need a health coach, personal trainer, whatever it is you need, do that. And so that led into episode 40, Cruising Through Challenges. That was nice. I was on a cruise for that one. So you could see the water in the background. And I talked about some real life challenges because we had some challenges just trying to get on the cruise. Oh, my goodness. I said, are we going to make it to this cruise? Issues with the plane, just all kinds of things. It's just it's just it was just like symbolic of how life is in general. Like when a good thing's going to come, you have to go through the storm first. You got to go through the challenge first. You got to work for your victory. You can work for your joy. Episode 41, parenting challenges. Well, you know, there's patience. So just having like the expectation of, yeah, parenting's challenging, but I can do this. Tell yourself, you can do it. You're not going to hit the child across his face because he annoyed you. And really hitting or spanking, honestly, I believe is representative of a lack of patience on you. You need to look inside yourself and I'm doing, I do that to make sure like I am patient. What do I need to do so that I don't yell at my child or so that I don't hit them or things like that. So something to work on. Uh, Episode 42, ADHD and lying. I talked about an article that talked about how lying can be wrapped in and related to ADHD. Episode 43, parenting challenges. I mean, parenting children with mental illnesses with special guest, Dr. Shivani Naidu. She was fabulous. She gave a lot of wonderful nuggets on how to parent kids when they have mental illness. Episode 44 was how to know I need help. How do you know you need help? What do you need to do? What are the signs? That was getting into May, Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. And episode 45 was silence to strength. Don't suffer in silence. Don't, don't just not say nothing to people like you can get into strength 
Find someone that you trust. Find that good therapist that you feel safe with. And then you can get from that silence and suffering and shame to the strength. And that leads to episode 46, Acceptance in the Shadow of Stigma, with special guest Jewel Gooding, who is the executive director of Silence to Shame. So we talked a lot about stigma and shame and all those things that prevent us from seeking help. Episode 47, The Silent Struggle, Mental Health Realities for Black Men, with special guest Gideon. Gideon Asusa, he's a nurse, psychiatric nurse practitioner. And that was great because we were talking about black men and what it's like to be a black man, what it's like to raise black men. So that was uh, really good because men in general have unique battles. Black men in general have unique battles when it comes to their mental health and mental illness and seeking care. Episode 48, Less Than Therapy, Daily Habits for Sustainable Sanity. So that was nice. And that was when I started to introduce our five crucial areas of health that I talked about earlier. Episode 49, Joy Unleashed, Breaking Barriers in Black Mental Health. Special guest, Dr. Tammy Benton, who is the president of the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatrists. And then I went into episode 50. 50 Shades of Joy, and last week was episode 51, Emancipation of the Mind, with special guest Dr. Cynthia Turner-Graham, who is the immediate past president of the Black Psychiatrists of America. So as you can see with this year in review of the Journey to Joy Live, it's just been fabulous having all these great special guests, whether they were experts in the field of mental health or experts in themselves because they talked about their own journey and their own Journey to Joy Live. If you want to be a guest on Journey to Joy Live, I welcome you. It's all about transparency, talking about yourself, bringing up what you've gone through through your journey to joy, because that's what's important. That's how we break down the stigma of mental illness and, and promote mental health and promote mental wellness is by talking about it. Just tell somebody what you have. Say it like it's like you're saying, oh, the sky is blue. Say, oh, yeah, the ADHD. Oh, yeah, my depression. Oh, yeah, my therapist. And it's in the music. You hear the rap music. Oh, they're talking about therapy. The comedians are talking about therapy. They're making fun of it. They're doing those things. It, it's not exempt from jokes, the dark jokes, all those things. That's all right. You know, but make it normal to talk about, because if people understand that it's normal to talk about their mental illness or their self-care or their journey to joy, then everyone else will feel the same way and start to get treatment. And we can see the numbers of depression go down, the numbers of anxiety go down, and the stigma will finally go away. That is the goal. Thank you for watching a year of Journey to Joy Live. I'm not done. We're going to get into the second year. I appreciate you all. appreciate you for following, liking, subscribing sharing, all those things. And look out for my journal that's coming in July that's going to help you be able to focus on your five crucial areas of health. You can work with that journal with your therapist. You can also do it on yourself, but it's always good to use um, a journal with a therapist to help you get through life. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.